Today on Outside the Box Reviews, we are going to be taking a look at my favorite figures that I purchased that came out in 2012. Now, I kind of went back and forth on how I was going to do this year-end wrap-up show. I didn't know if I was going to do the best figures I picked up this year, just in general, or if I was going to do the best figures I picked up that came out this year, or if I was going to do the best figures that I've seen this year. I decided it would make more sense to go with things I have personal experience with things I actually own. So anything that just didn't make it into my collection this year is being left out of the video. So let's get started. Figure number 10 is the NECA Terminator Kyle Reese figure. And the reason he makes it onto this list is just because we've been asking for this thing for so freaking long. Fans of the line have wanted something other than Arnold Schwarzenegger and Robert Patrick for quite a while now. And it took a very long time for this kind of thing to finally happen in the line. And to me, it really just represents kind of a little bit of a victory for us fans getting something else. Don't know what the future of that line holds. Don't really know where NECA is going to go with it. But even if this is the closeout of it with Kyle Reese, it was a good way to go. So Kyle Reese from NECA is number 10. For spot number 9 on our list... We have two figures sharing one spot, but hey, it works out since they shared a packaging together. It's the Avengers Mini Mates of Iron Man and Hulk. These are the ones that came out with the movie. I reviewed them earlier in the year. I think I may have mentioned I picked them up just because I was super hyped for Avengers and I wanted some more stuff. And this is what I went and grabbed. And I was so thrilled with them. The Cap and Thor pack didn't quite hold up to what I would hope it would have been. But these guys were super cool. Iron Man had so many different options. You could display him with just the Tony Stark head. You could have him like I have him now with his visor open. You could have him with the visor down. Hulk had two different faces. There's a lot of different display factors you can get out of one $8 two-pack of figures. So, so a really cool little pack. And it's my number nine pick. Number eight on the list is the Funko Pop Vinyl Leatherface. I love this little guy. He's just so freaking cute and homicidal and evil and going to cut you up with a chainsaw. But you know, he's very cute in the process of it. These are a bunch of little collectibles that I really enjoy grabbing when they come out with horror ones. And let's face it, 2012 was not a big year for horror collectibles. There just wasn't a whole lot. NECA gave us some stuff, but there just wasn't tons and tons like there have been in years past. So, this was a welcome addition to my collection of evil-looking things. He doesn't have a lot of articulation, and the paint is kind of vague on him, but I like him a lot. So he gets spot number eight. Coming in at number seven, we have the NECA... Jason Voorhees figures from Friday the 13th Part 3. This is another set of figures that really represents to me something I hope continues on in the future. I know NECA's been kind of tentative about saying we'll get any more Jasons past the Part 4 we're getting in January. But I'm really hoping it's a sign of awesome things to come. And I did mention in my review of this guy that the Mezco one is a perfectly serviceable entry into this. But these guys are just so cool looking. The articulation so top-notch. The sculpting's wonderful. They really are just great additions to a horror collection. As I mentioned before, we didn't get a whole lot of horror this year. Even though there are several of them sitting here in my list. And Jason's also a welcome addition to anything I add to my collection. So, even though I couldn't pick one of these two to sit alone at spot number seven, they're just going to have to share it. Number six on my list is the NECA Henrietta figure from Evil Dead 2. Now, unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to do my review of this figure yet. It's been one I really want to get around to, but I was super busy when this figure came out, and I just never got around to shooting it. So I'm going to have to make sure I do it sometime soon, because... I really dig this figure. It's one of those things that, if you saw my Prometheus figure review, the Trilobite, I kind of have a similar feeling, but not to the same extreme. But it's one of those things you just wonder, how the heck did this get out onto Toys R Us shelves? I mean, I'm sure it's kind of gone. But it's a really disturbing little figure, very well detailed. And as I said, I'll have to get into the full review of it because 
She deserves it. That's why she also deserves spot number six. Taking spot number five is the Bandai SH Monster Arts King Ghidorah figure. And what an amazing piece this is. I just talked about him recently. I don't really have a whole lot more I could add to it. But he's an absolutely stunning figure. And he would have been a lot higher on this list if his heads hadn't had such a bad tendency to fall off. If everything stayed together just a little bit better, he really could have been a contender, at least for the top three spots on my list this year. But even still, number five is no small feat to achieve on this list. And I just absolutely love this guy. Coming in at number four on the list is the NECA Assassin's Creed Revelations Ezio the Mentor figure. This guy is this high on the list simply because he kind of has everything I would have wanted on an Assassin's Creed figure. He's got both his blades that are retractable, sword, a dagger, crossbow. He's just packed with everything I would have wanted. And he has the great articulation that NECA has been putting out in these figures these last two waves. And he's just super cool. He may not be as high end of a piece as something like the King Ghidorah is but I still feel like he's a very high contender on this list just because there's nothing really missing on him, and that's a rarity with a lot of action figures. So that gets him spot number four. Coming in at spot number three is the action figure line that sent me on a mega nostalgia trip, the Playmates Ninja Turtles Classics line. These guys are so cool. I loved the Ninja Turtles as a kid, and this line just blew me away when I got my hands on them. When I saw they were happening, I knew I had to have them. Honestly, I hunted all of them down before they even hit Toys R Us stores, but even when they did, they came and went so quickly, it was amazing. They were really a heavily sought after figure. So I know I'm not the only collector who would have this on their top 10 from 2012 list. This was just a cool line. I couldn't pick one. They're very similar anyway. And another set of figures that I need to get reviews done on. But to be honest with you, I slacked just because when these things came out, everybody was reviewing them. And I felt like every channel I went to on YouTube, everybody had a review up. And it just wouldn't have been worth my time, I think, to put it up then. Just because I was getting sick and tired of hearing about these figures from other people. So I figured I'd give these guys a little bit of a break, come back when I'd had a little time to calm down over the super nostalgia hype of them, and give them a review at that point. But even if I can't get around to reviewing them yet, they still very solidly land at spot number three. Spot number two on my list this year has to go to the Hot Toys Captain America the First Avenger Red Skull figure. I reviewed a lot of Marvel stuff this year, and this was a piece that was totally unexpected and totally awesome at the same time. Won him in a contest. To be quite honest with you, I'd forgotten I'd even entered the contest by the time the win came around. My first Hot Toys figure. Just an unbelievable, unbelievable figure. And I know Hot Toys excels at it. They do some amazing detail on all of their figures that they put out, and this guy's no exception. It's definitely awoken a bit of an addiction in me. I've been kind of eyeing some other hot toys, I must say. Uh, dark path to start down, I'm sure. But definitely worthy of spot number two. So if hot toys comes in number two, you probably were wondering what on earth could smash it off the top of the list? Well, the answer is simple. The Marvel Select Avengers Hulk. Now hear me out on this, we're talking about a Hot Toy that is a very high-end figure, a $200 action figure, and we're comparing it to a $20 comic book specialty store retail item. There's a massive difference here, I mean it's a tenfold difference, but what you get in this figure is just phenomenal. And I find myself coming back to him over and over just by how cool he is. The sculpting on him is wonderful, the paint on him is great, the articulation is amazing, especially for a Marvel Select where you don't really expect it. Hulk was really the standout character of Avengers, and this is just a great figure of it. I'm sure when the Hot Toy comes out in early 2013, he's going to be an amazing piece, 
and I'm sure everyone will forget this thing even exists when that thing's around. But for the price and for how easy he was to come by, and where you could actually just drive to a store and pick him up and not pay a whole lot for him, it's a really, really cool piece. And also fitting because the entire beginning of 2012 for me was spent in a massive Avengers hype. I pretty much spent the entire beginning of the year reviewing almost nothing but Marvel toys having to do with the movie series. And for as much Marvel as I ingested this year, I felt like spot number one really had to go to a Marvel figure. Honestly, spots one and two both went to Marvel figures. But to me, this is the best overall value purchase cool thing that I got in 2012. So let me know, am I crazy for not picking Red Skull for the top of my list? Is my whole order messed up? Am I missing something that I've reviewed from this year? Am I serious that of all the Predator figures I reviewed this year, not one of them made the top 10? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think and to see what you think the top 10 you picked up in 2012 is. I'll be back soon with my worst of 2012 video. And until then, check out Outside the Box Reviews on Facebook and stay tuned for more to come.